If you have your Bibles, can you get them out so we can take a look together what the Bible has to say? Today I'd like to talk about spiritual harvest. And if you have your Bibles, let's turn over to John chapter 4. And we're going to verse 27. John chapter 4. And John's the fourth book in your New Testament. So the Gospel of John. We're going over to chapter 4. And we're going to start in verse 27. And it says, At this point his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. So we're going to stop there in verse 30 for a moment because if you read the chapter at the beginning, starting in verse 1, you'll see that Jesus met a woman at the well and he talked with her. And while he was explaining the gift that he can give to her, she evidently believed in him for everlasting life. And this is the point where we're picking up in verse 27, that at that point, his disciples came and they were surprised that he was talking to a woman, especially a Samaritan. She was a Samaritan who was a little bit different than what the, his disciples were. They were Jews and the, she was a Samaritan. So she would, they were surprised, but they didn't dare ask her, why are you talking with her or what are you doing? They must have known that he had a good reason for talking with her. And in verse 28, the woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me everything I have ever done. And she said, Could this be the Christ? She believed that he was the Christ, but I guess she didn't want to come off too strong or whatever the reason is. She did it as a question. Maybe just to get people's interest curious. But whatever the reason is, maybe she just wanted a softer way to present Jesus as the Christ to people, and that can work even today. You might not want to come out and say, Jesus is the Christ, and if you believe in him, maybe you can just do as a question, did you know that Jesus is the Christ, and if you believe in him, that you can receive everlasting life? So depending on who you're dealing with, sometimes a soft answer or a soft way to approach people is a better way. Sometimes you need a very strong and direct message, and sometimes you need a softer but whatever the reason, she said it in the question, could this be the Christ? But look at verse 30. Then they went out of the city and came to him. So whatever she said worked. Okay, so we can see that this is probably not everything she said to them, but everything that she said must have got their interest up enough for them to come out of the city to meet him. And they went to him and wanted to meet him. But we can also see that she went and witnessed the moment she was witnessing about Jesus, the moment after she believed. It didn't take her like years and years of classes to go out and witness to people. She didn't have to take a baptism class or, or wait to make sure that she really believed or any. A lot of places nowadays will say, well, you should do this and this and this before you go out and tell people about this or you should wait and do this. But that's not what this shows here. She went the same day. In fact, it's probably literally within minutes or within a few minutes that she went and told people, wow, I bet Jesus, he's the Christ. Could this be possible? Come and see. And these people went and saw him. Well, let's continue on in verse 31. It says, in the meantime, his disciples urged him saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say there are still four months and there then and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And we're going to stop there in verse 38 for a moment, because going back to where we left off, it says that in Jesus had food that the disciples were not knowing of, and that's spiritual food. He was doing the will of the Father, and that was his food. And that's what verse 34 is saying is, My food is to the will of him, that's God the Father, who sent me, and to finish his work. And in verse 35, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? That was true about physical food. The physical food was still four more months before the harvest would come. But notice now he's talking about spiritual where he says, Behold, 
I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Any time's a good time for a spiritual harvest. You never know who's ready to hear the gospel message and to believe in Jesus as Savior. We just have to take a chance and try to speak up about it. And some people are not ready, and they don't want to hear it, or they don't, or they're a little bit interested, but not enough to really, you know, spend the time with you yet. Or they might even meet with you for a while and still not believe. But they're if you keep plugging at it and you keep telling people the gospel message, eventually you're probably going to reap a harvest. If you tell one person in one year the gospel message, the chances of that one person believing are not that high. But if you tell 10 people in one year, the chances go up that somebody's going to believe. And if you raise that up to 100 people a year that you go out and tell the Bible message to, well, now your chance of somebody believing goes up quite high. And you can continue on the pattern, but you can see if we are being, if we're on the lookout to reap a harvest, that is possible that we may. But the main thing is that we are faithful to do it. We don't have to sit there and really make the results come because that's up to God. Our job is just to be faithful to go out and do it. And that's what verse 36 is saying. It says, and he who reaps receives wages. If we're doing this, we get rewards for this and gathers fruit for eternal life. That both he who sows, that means the person that's telling the message that the person may not believe yet, and he who reaps, the person that sees the person actually believe in Jesus, they both rejoice together. They are rejoicing together, for in this saying is true, one sows and another reaps, I sent you to reap. The disciples here in verse 38 went out and they were reaping fruit from other people's works, such as John the Baptist and others that went before them in telling the Bible message. And they didn't believe at that time. But when the disciples went to tell them, these people were believing and the disciples were reaping. But they're both going to receive a reward, the sower and the reaper. And it could be many sowers before the reaper comes along. And let's hold our place here because we're going over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're going to start in verse 5. 1 Corinthians is a few books past the Gospel of John, so going towards the back of your New Testament, we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 5. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? So Paul and Apollos were both ministering the word of God to those, and people believed their message. But he's saying, who are they? And then it says in verse 6, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So it's up to God what the results are. Our job is just to be faithful to do, do what we should do, which is tell the word of God. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. It's not about us, it's about God. In verse 8, now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. So you will receive a reward, and we have the joy of God using us to bring people to know him. But the results are up to God, so we can't be discouraged or get too excited about the results because it's really up to God. We can just be rejoicing that we tried our best to do what we needed to do, which is to tell the Bible message. Give out a free Bible to somebody. Oh, do you have a Bible? Let me give you one. Uh, whatever the chance or opportunity may be for you. Anyways, going on to verse 9, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. Notice then in verse 9 at the beginning, For we are God's fellow workers. We shouldn't be doing this alone. If there's a believer that's around you, get them to try to help you out. Do it together. It's good to have somebody working with you. And if it's more than one person, even better. Well, let's go back to John. We're going back to John chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse 39. John chapter 4, verse 39, and it says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me that I, all that I ever did. Notice that a lot of the people that lived in the city believed in Jesus. That means they received everlasting life because of the word of the woman. And she was a new believer, and she was testifying about him, and they believed because she was willing to tell them about him. But let's look at verse 40. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed of his own word. And many more believed because of his own word. Do you see how wonderful this is? Not only did she 
have people believe when she told them about it, but she got them to come to him. And when they heard him with their own ears, many more believed because of his own word. And that's true today. You might go to a group and tell them about the Bible. Maybe one or two seem interested, but later on, they might go to church or they might meet another believer and then they believe at that time. So we just need to be faithful to keep on trying. And in verse 42, notice what they said. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. And this is what is needed to receive everlasting life. You have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, or another way to say it is the Savior. And that's what they're believing, that he is the Christ, the Savior of the world. They believed what you needed to believe in order to receive everlasting life. And the condition is the same today. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world, and you believe in him, then you have everlasting life, just like these people did. And that's the great message of the Bible. And if you're interested and you haven't believed yet and you want to believe, then just put your faith in Jesus for everlasting life and you will have it. And you can read this book of the Gospel of John and it will give you a lot of great verses that tell you that once you believe in Jesus as Savior, you have everlasting life forever and you can never lose it. And if you have believed in Jesus as Savior already, then try to be getting a harvest and by telling people this great message. Well, thank you for joining me for this Bible study. I hope you've enjoyed it. Tell your friends and family about it and gather them around and join me for my next Bible study. Thank you.